thanks for making it in this morning on the Zoom call. Uh, the Veterans and Military Affairs Finance Pol Policy Committee will come to order. It is Thursday, February 4th, 8.32 a.m. Um, I'd like to welcome back all of the, um, the members. Good morning again. Um, we do have three things on the agenda this morning, three different bills, two from Senator Swazinski and one from Senator Jasinski. Uh, good morning, Mitt. Senator Anderson. Saw you made it in, good thing. Uh, but I'd ask you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance this morning, if you would. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Well, thank you very much. Um, first thing up on the agenda is Senate File 302. Uh, I did see Senator Jasinski in the room. Good morning, Senator Jasinski. Please identify yourself for the record and proceed with your bill presentation. Good morning, Chair Lang. Uh, I am Senator John Jasinski, uh, District 24, and I am truly honored to be able to introduce Senate file number 302. Uh, this is a fine young gentleman. I've never had, never had the uh, pleasure to meet, but I've heard so many great things uh, about this fine young man. Uh, I was actually at the Waseca County Fair uh, back a few years ago, and they had a memorial uh, with all the Operation Enduring Freedom uh, veterans and uh, stood by his picture and heard many great stories about him. So uh, as you well know, uh, I have, maybe you don't know, but I know I've done two tours in the Persian Gulf as well. Uh, back in 1986 to 1990, a frame uh, but what I served was totally different. What this fine young officer or this uh, gentleman, I should say, Corporal, uh, served over there. I did two deployments. They were each six months apiece. I know Senator Lang did uh, two deployments over there as well. And his were 18 months and, and uh, longer than that. So uh, what I served was definitely uh, different than what this uh, Corporal served, but uh, he did just great things. I've heard so many great things about him. So uh, I wanna thank uh, former Senator Mike Perry who brought this to my attention and who's been working on this with the family and friends in Wasika. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Senator Mike Perry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator. Uh, Mr. Chairman, committee members, it's great to be here. Uh, I too uh, remember uh, Caleb uh, as he was growing up, a, a young man. Uh, and what I remember most is he always had a smile on his face and was one of the most polite uh, young men that uh, I, I recall remembering. What's gonna happen here today, uh, briefly, uh, we have uh, a total of seven people. Uh, and they all understand the constraints to the time we have. Uh, and so we're gonna start out with um, a brief message by our veteran service officer, uh, Mr. Chris Hinton. Chris? You wanna turn your sound on? No, this is fine. Oh, all right, yeah. they can hear you. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen of the committee. My name is Christopher Hinton. I'm the County Veteran Service Officer for Waseca County. Uh, in order to be observant of your time, I kept my comments brief. Uh, whenever we lose one of our own, it's tragic and heart-wrenching to those that are closest to the fallen, their families and their friends who will always remember them. When a military member gives their life, it is no small thing. It is truly the ultimate sacrifice. And that sacrifice should be known and never forgotten. To do this is to truly commemorate their life and their actions. We've held many events, held vigils as to show our appreciation for Caleb and his actions. Naming this section of highway after Caleb isn't a small thing, we know this. But as people pass through Waseca County on Highway 13, they will see the signs and it will drive conversation. Children will ask their parents, who is this person and why is this highway named after them? And their parents will be able to tell them who he was and what he did. In the case that they don't know, they'll be able to look it up and learn for themselves and then teach their children. Either way, he will not be forgotten. His memory will live on. And through that memory, we show our appreciation for him. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Chris. Um, and now we're going to move on. I, I felt it appropriate, uh, Mr. Chairman and, and committee, that uh, I invite our Sergeant at Arms here at the Wasika Post 228. He is in charge of the Honor Guard. And I'm sure many of you have uh, witnessed how we lay to rest one of our fallen. I would like to introduce our Sergeant of Arms, uh, Stan Call. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stan Call. I'm the Sergeant at Arms here at American Legion Post 228. When we get a phone call, when one of our own have fallen, we set, a, set an internet in motion to get everyone involved. Between the American Legion and the VFW, we come up with about 20 people, all volunteers. And what we do is we provide the rifle volley, the flag folding if they prefer, and also the flag presentation when everyone or whenever anyone is, has passed. So with saying that, it's, uh, we need to understand all these people are volunteers and they are all veterans. And a lot of these veterans that we're talking about are 80, 90 year old men and women that will stand out there no matter what to make sure that every veteran has a military honor and a military funeral. And that's what these people do. And that's what I'm humbly in charge of. And I really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Now we're gonna move on to our five uh, testifiers. And uh, first, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to introduce you to Caleb's mother, a wonderful woman. This is Carla. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and committee members. Um, I want to thank you for letting us speak today. Um, Caleb was an amazing son. He uh, was an easy, go lucky kind of kid. Um, big heart, big smile. He would do anything for anybody. If you would ask his friends or his brothers that he served with. Um, Caleb was a typical boy messy room, um, you know, like to hang out on the couch, do the video games, hang out with friends. As he got older, he would um, get together with friends um, and they would tinker on vehicles. Um, he decided to go into the service um, at around 16. And um, his mind was pretty much set up from then on. He worked very hard. Um, in PT to get ready um, for the Marines. Uh, he graduated from high school on, in June of 2012. And on July 16th, he left for the Yellow Footprints. He, uh, his um, MO was for um, uh, mechanic H, H and S. Um, he left for his first and only deployment in September of 13 and was um, hit by a um, suicide bomber. There was um, five in the vehicle and luckily Caleb was the only casualty. So, I know I will never forget him. And by doing this, after I'm gone, I know others won't forget him either. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. And now um, I'd like to uh, bring in a, 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 the sister. We're gonna, I, I think she's on. Uh, Rue, are you there? Uh, un, unmute you on your computer. Hi. Go ahead, Rue. Welcome, Chairman and committee members. Um, this is a great honor for my brother. Um, he would be very honored and pleased. And I know he loved his community very much, and he would just be overjoyed by this um, naming of the highway. So thank you very much. 
Thank you, Rue. Moving forward, we're gonna call in a very close family friend. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my old neighbors who uh, used to host a lot of uh, friends of Caleb, along with Caleb, as they were growing up, uh, Peggy Zinio. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and committee members. My name is Peggy Zinnell. I'm My son was a very close friend of Caleb's and we only live like a half a block from Carla and Caleb and Rue. Um, we have numerous memorial highways that are named throughout Minnesota. Those roads are named after a wide variety of groups and individuals. These individuals are politicians, authors, advocates, educators, business owners, architects, and musicians. You also have Memorial Highways named after law enforcement officers who lost their lives serving this state. There are meaningful, there are Memorial Highways dedicated to the military, but, but mostly representing a specific group or veterans in general. You also have a few named after individuals that served. You have a general and a medal of honor recipient. Highway 13 should be a Memorial Highway named after Corporal Caleb Erickson who grew up in Wasika and served his country proudly by giving the ultimate sacrifice. Naming the highway after him would recognize the sacrifice that he and his family have made to the freedom of this country. His name belongs with the names of the others that have represented the state with pride and honor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Peggy. Moving forward, uh, Mr. Chairman and committee members, uh, I'm looking to see if we have Kyle Edwards. Kyle, are you with us? He might not have been able to join in on Zoom. So uh, let's uh, move forward to our final uh, testifier here. Uh, Martin McNamara, can you unmute and join us? Yes, sir. Hello, Martin. Hello. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Uh, Carla contacted me recently to uh, tell me that there was going to be a highway memorialized after Caleb, uh, and I thought it was pretty great. Um, I served alongside of him. I was actually the driver of the vehicle that was hit by the suicide bomber. Um, you know, we're nothing if not our legacy, and uh, you know, having a highway named after you is a pretty good way to ensure your legacy. And uh, you know, like it was said before, people from here on out will always know his name. And that's an extreme comfort uh, and a great honor. Thank you, Martin. Uh, Mr. Chairman, unless Kyle Edward is, is on, um, that would complete our testimony on Senate file 302. And I, I really appreciate uh, the time. If there's any questions for anyone, they're still right here. Uh, you surely can ask. Uh, other than that, thank you. Members, uh, is there any questions or comments? Senator Howe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I, you know, I, for uh, Peggy, I, I tell you what, that's uh, the ultimate sacrifice. I will tell you that the, uh, the one soldier I lost in Iraq, I have his, uh, I have his picture uh, and his stuff engraved on a piece of granite that I walk past every day when I go home into my front door. Uh, uh, it's quite the sacrifice, and uh, it's uh, this is the least we can do for our fallen. So uh, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you, Senator Howe. Members, any other questions? Well, I would, I'd just like to say, you know, I, to the, to the family and to uh, all, all the advocates as we have go through this process, this isn't the first time we've done this. Um, I can say that the first time I did it, I was, was kind of curious what it was really going to mean to the family. Um, and I can tell you after going through the process, it was very important to them. Uh, and, I, and I, I'd like to the committee to know that it didn't just mean something to the family. It meant something to the community. It meant something to me every time now that I drive past that sign uh, that has a, a young man's name on it that I never met. 
what it rec what it really symbolizes for me is much bigger than what we're doing here today. It's actually much bigger than Caleb himself, probably. Um, so I appreciate that. So Senator Jaczynski, if you'd like to have the final words and, and then we'll move your bill. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Lang. And uh, to the uh, family, uh, this is my first uh, highway naming. So it is one I will remember. And I, and I hope it's the last one I have to do. Uh, it would be great to just be the one and only. So again, uh, to the Erickson family, I really do appreciate doing this. I want to say thanks to Senator Mike Perry, who brought this to my attention. Uh, and I will, as Senator Lang said, I will always remember uh, driving this highway or Senator House. And you always remember this, uh, something that I'll be very honored to have done for you as the family and uh, to the, all the friends, uh, to Martin for coming in. I still stay in touch with my uh, military friends. There's a, a handful of group and that's a very a tight group. Uh, so it's important to us to do this. And again, I, I wanna thank everybody uh, for that. And the last thing I just, I wish we could have done this in person. Uh, it would be, mean much more to have you in front of us so we can give you a hug and uh, meet each other. Uh, but uh, I'm glad we can get this done. I know it was delayed from last year. So we wanted to get it done. We did talk about the delaying it so we could do it in person, uh, but we really want to get this done. So again, to the Erickson family, uh, my sincere uh, sympathies for what you've gone through. And uh, we look forward to keeping uh, Caleb's name to live on forever with this highway. So thank you. Thank you, Senator Jaczynski. Uh, Senator Anderson, would you like to move the bill? I would, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to move that Senate file 302 be recommended to pass and sent to general orders. Uh, members, Senator Anderson moves that Senate file 302 be recommended to pass the committee. Re -refer to Senator the Ling, sorry to jump in. This bill goes to transportation. Sorry yep. about that. Yep. Re -refer recommended to pass and re-refer to the Transportation and Finance Committee. So moved, Mr. Chair. Again, just a reminder, all those, uh, please say aye and raise your hand. I stand for that. The other. Uh, so, aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. It is passed. And you're on your interpretation. And I don't know, I saw S Senator Newton, did you have your hand up? Did you want to make a final a comment as well? <laughs> no, Mr. Chair, I was just raising my hand. I thought <laughs> I was Very good, very good. So great. Senator Jasinski, you're on your way to transportation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair Lang and committee members. So next on the agenda, Senator Swazinski, I, I saw, uh, there he is right up there in the upper right corner of my screen. Uh, Senator Sosinski has uh, this morning Senate file 363. Um, looks like he has a couple of testifiers as well. Senator Swazinski, uh, please identify yourself for record and, and proceed. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, Senator Steve Swazinski, uh, I just wanted to say I, I missed this committee. My first four years, I was on it. and. Boy, I tell you, um, there, there was never, uh, there was rarely a meeting where I didn't get choked up during testimony. And uh, um, I just had that similar experience already today. So um, you guys do good work on this committee. And it's, so it was a pleasure to serve on a, such a bipartisan committee doing good work for people um, that did good work for America. So anyways, with that said, that's not my opening remarks, but I had to say, get that off my chest this morning. The bill before you is Senate file 363, which would allow the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs to establish the Veterans Stable Housing Initiative and allow the partners of the Homeless Veterans Registry to more quickly get um, veterans placed in homes with the services they need. As many of you may be aware, the Homeless Veterans Registry is made up of housing and service professionals who work on a case-by-case -case basis to match veterans with housing and services they may need. Data for individuals experiencing homelessness is currently classified as private data. This has placed limitations on the speed in which veterans can be helped due to the time it takes for data requests. 
This proposal keeps data private for people on the Homeless Veterans Registry, while also authorizing the um, Department of Veterans Affairs to share or disclose an individual's data to coordinate homelessness prevention efforts with members of the Minnesota Inter Interagency Council on Homelessness and Homeless Veterans Registry partners to respond quickly. That was a mouthful. The, the, this bill is necessary to drastically increase the timeliness of addressing the needs of veterans experiencing homelessness. We need to streamline and speed up the process of getting a roof over every veteran's head. For many veterans in crisis, every day matters. This bill carries no cost, there's no physical note, and simply allows MDVA to continue doing the work they already are doing, but in a more streamlined fashion. And I'd be amiss if I didn't remind the, the, the uh, people on the, on the, um, the, in the hearing today, um, my favorite movie, It's a Wonderful Life, there's that classic scene when George Bailey is explaining to the bankers the importance of, of having a home over your head. And doesn't it make you better citizens? Doesn't it make you better consumers? Doesn't it make you better Americans? And so with that, I'd like to, um, I have two testifiers today and I see that they're both here, um, Andrew Garveas and Paul Williams from MDVA. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Suzinski. Uh, Mr. Garveas, if you wanted to start or actually either the other way, either way, whoever wanted to go first, go ahead and identify yourself for the record and, and proceed with the testimony. Good morning, my name is Andy Jarvis and I'm the Director of Veterans Programs and Memorial Affairs for the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. And I just wanna thank you, Senator Sosinski, for introducing this bill and uh, Chair and Committee members for hearing us. You know, first I wanna tell you a little bit of a background of where we're at and where we came from. In early 2014, we were at a, a meeting with Minnesota Housing Finance Agency in one of their conference rooms with representatives from all of the state agencies that comprised the Mitch. And we were talking about data and how we were gonna handle data in an effort to end homelessness across the state of Minnesota. And we spoke up and we said, well, we can't end homelessness if we don't know who is homeless. So we need to compile a list of homeless individuals so that we can work in partnerships to end their homelessness. And when we said that, everyone was surprised. Their jaws dropped and like, you can't do that. You can't create a list. You can't share data. That's just not something that can be done. And we walked away from that meeting a little remiss. And we said, well, we're going to do it, you know. Our mission is to help veterans and we're going to end veteran homelessness. So we faced adversity, but we found a way to do it. And later that year, in December of 2014, we launched our homeless veteran registry. We had a myriad of different partners and it was a, a daunting challenge. Um, it required us to have a very robust Tennyson that listed all the partners and every veteran would sign that Tennyson and it was good for one year. So for one year, we could share their data and, and it's, it's worked, um, it's, it's, it's been difficult and we've, we've had our challenges, but since 2014, we've uh, had an iterative process of improving um, how we end veteran homelessness, uh, creating more partnerships and more collaboration across local governments, federal government and state government agencies. And I'm proud to say that since 2014, we've effectively ended homelessness in six out of the 10 continuums of care, um, which are geographical regions comprised of different counties. And so we only have four continuums of cares left in the state of Minnesota, which really comprises Hennepin County, uh, Ramsey County, St. Louis County, and then the central COC, which is the St. Cloud, uh, Stearns County, and, and some of the surrounding counties up there. So I think we've done a really good job, but the problem we have, and we've had it since its inception, is that now with the remaining uh, COCs, these are the most transient population um, they're some of the hardest cases to solve and they require a lot of communication and partnership. And we're really challenged uh, with uh, sharing data without um, this legislation. And it's something that we um, introduced last year, um, but due to COVID, I think all of our priorities uh, shifted. And so we weren't able to uh, see that through. So um, now what I'd like to do is uh, turn the presentation over to Sloan Kessler uh, from our office, um, who really has spearheaded uh, drafting this legislation and uh, working with all the different uh, partners in Mitch and, and 
different state agencies and ensuring that um, uh, the language was appropriate. Well, thank you, Mr. Jarvay. Uh, Ms. Kessler, if you'd like to identify yourself for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you. My name is Sloan Kessler, um, and I am a homeless programs coordinator with the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, committee. It is an honor to be here today. Uh, this bill has been characterized very well, <laughs> very, very well by all of you. And I think um, I'm really here today to explain the importance of the different components of uh, this policy proposal. Uh, the first component being that at MDVA, we are very committed to ending veteran homelessness. Um, we want to be the fourth state to say that we've done that. And uh, as Andy had, had said, there are four continuums of care that have yet to meet that, that benchmark. And we are ready to take on that challenge. Uh, and so the first component of the policy proposal of making our team uh, something that is going to be um, recognized, supported by all of the great work that that we do, uh, that the commissioner is is on board, the governor is on board. We are just really excited that this is something that could be recognized uh, in purpose. Right, this goes forward. The the commitment to ending veteran homelessness is is bolstered through uh, the first component of the policy proposal. Uh, the second part of the policy proposal, Andy again mentioned how important it is that we are uh, working to find solutions to homelessness on a very, very quick basis. Uh, we believe that homelessness is an emergency. Uh, when we are working with veterans and service providers uh, for those that are experiencing homelessness, sometimes it's the only chance we have face-to-face uh, -face with that veteran who needs help in that very, very moment. And so this uh, proposed policy legislation will help us to very quickly expedite uh, that process, which um, for a lot of people and a lot of veterans that are on the homeless veteran registry, sometimes that key moment is so, so important for us to find them stable housing. Um, so with that, uh, just really excited about this policy proposal establishing both the stable housing initiative and um, the data sharing piece. We are committed at MDVA to ending veteran homelessness and we are getting very close um, and we wanna do everything we possibly can to get a roof over every, every veteran's head. Um, so thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, thank Mr. You, Mr. Uh, it looks like uh, Senator Newton has a question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. It's not so much a question. I just want to thank my friend uh, Andy Jarvis for the outstanding work that he's been doing on this and for constantly following up and, and uh, keeping track of veterans and making sure that they're accounted for. Uh, as you know, Mr. Chair, and some of the new members of the committee may not know, this bill uh, passed the committee last year, and I would hope that we can move it forward again this year. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Newton. Any additional questions or comments? Uh, seeing none, Senator Newton, would you be uh, willing to move the? Oh, me willing to move the bill? <laughs> uh, the technology. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I, I would like to um, move Senate File three six three. Senator Newton moves that Senate file six, th excuse me, 363 be recommended to pass and re referred to civil law and data practices policy committee. And again, all those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. And you, your bill has been passed, Senator Sosinski, and, and passed on to the civil and data practices committee. Thank you. Uh, and I guess I probably should have said some final comments that uh, I think this is, this bill is an important piece of of the homelessness initiative that both the departments have have been working on the last couple of years. And I think this committee has shown a, quite a bit of interest and a commitment to, to helping that process as it go along. So with that, uh, good luck in the next committee and I hope to, to see it on the floor. Uh, the last item on the agenda today, uh, Senator Sodzinski, uh, you don't get to go anywhere yet. Uh, Senate file 364 you have before us as well. Um, 
so you can uh, please identify yourself for the record again and uh, proceed with the testimony on 364. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Again, it's Steve Swadzinski, um, Senator, um, Senator Swadzinski. Um, I want to apologize for Mr. Jarvis. I butchered his name when I introduced him on the yeah, last. I followed suit too. You saw that, right? <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> so nice job, um, Mr. Chair, um, subtly correct, making sure that I was aware of that. So anyways, um, and thank you, um, Ms. Kessler as well for the work that you do for homeless people. The bill before you is Senate File 364, which would allow the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs to be exempt from the state prohibition on agencies paying the salary or expenses of publicity representatives. MDVA has an excellent communications division working through media relations, legislative reports, and other methods. However, there are some tasks in which they need additional help, oftentimes from outside partners. The benefit of allowing a contracted external publicity representative is that it allows additional help for short-term projects without the need for a long-term expenditure on an additional full-time equivalent, FTE. This would not carry any increased cost to taxpayers, but simply allow the agency to work with an outside PR firm when necessary. For example, instead of spending resources on hiring and out boarding, um, onboarding additional staff, MDVA will be able to work with local groups that are familiar with the local towns and local areas in which the projects are focused. Um, here to testify um, on behalf of the bill is Ben Johnson from the Department of Veterans Affairs. And I just wanna thank um, Senator Newton for his hard work in um, previous um, last year on both these bills and, um, and for his service for his, on behalf of his country. So thank you, Senator Newton. Thank you, Senator Swazinski. It looks like uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, no stranger to the committee. I don't know, you're probably gonna need to still identify yourself for the record and pursue the testimony, sir. Yes, sir, uh, Chair Lang, members of the committee. My name's Ben Johnson. I'm the legislative director for the State Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, and for the second week in a row, I have an easy task here. Senator Swazinski has done an outstanding job introducing what we're attempting to accomplish. Um, and I stand by for any specific questions that might arise. Um, Again, uh, he, he covered it very well. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, members, any questions, comments about the uh, the bill? Well, that, that uh, I think, oh, Senator Anderson, I, I see your hand popped up. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Johnson, what do you do now for your public affairs uh, as far as uh, advertising or things like that? Chair Lang, Senator Anderson, thank you for the question. Um, currently, we utilize the resources that we have to do advertising that is not um, that is not necessarily contracting with an explicit individual as a publicity representative. We do have, you know, uh, advertising and contracting, which is permitted per the statute. Um, but this this uh, the goal here is to come within come within the the understanding of a publicity representative as not just a, an entity but an individual as well. So. Um, we have contracts available that fall within uh, the guidance of the of the bill of the statutory language that say uh, we we are permitted to send out bulletins or do publicity um, to to conduct our business, um, but we want to make sure that we're covered. That if there is if someone were to to uh, to complain about a a contract or or advertising that we are doing as an agency, that we can say uh, we are permitted to do this work on behalf of veterans. And you can't do that now? Uh, Chair Lang, Senator Anderson, uh, we do we we are able to do contracts for um, like publications for printing materials, pamphlets, briefings, things like that. Uh, we work with county veteran service officers and in, in the, the uh, grants that they receive to to uh, do billboards and signage, that sort of thing. Um, we simply want to make sure that that we are permitted to do the work um, that that in the case of a publicity representative under that that the understanding of what a PR firm or a publicity representative would be um, we also envision something like a, a spokesperson if we had a, an individual who we think would do a good job of communicating with a, with a community about uh, the work that we're doing um, that would not necessarily be um, 
that would not necessarily be standard business operating. We want to make sure that we are we are protected from any concerns about um, breaching the statute. Uh, if we were to hire an individual per se, or if we were going to do um, some sort of advertising with an individual, um, we want to make sure that we're not getting sideways of the st state statute. I don't see how you're going to get sideways with the state statute. Can you explain how you're going to be sideways with the state statute now? Uh, uh, Chair Lang, Senator Anderson, uh, we're we're not sideways with the state statute now. Uh, the the go the goal of this bill is to get ourselves added to the list of agencies who are not prohibited from from hiring or or spending any state dollars on a publicity representative. Um, and, and again, that I guess maybe that definition is squishy, but. Uh, this was a, a question raised to me as the legislative director, and I said, well, I believe it's an easy fix. If there is a concern, we, we have not had one. No one has expressed concerns about how we're doing our uh, media relations. Um, but the, the goal here really is just to add ourselves to the list of agencies who are, are exempt from that prohibition. So are you anticipating something, or as, a, as we used to say, if it's not broke, don't fix it? Uh, Chair Lang, Senator Anderson, no, uh, that <laughs> this is this is one of those sort of forward looking um, whenever someone brings a question to us about uh, can you do this, uh, whether it be an internal question or a, a, a member of the legislature or uh, just a, a public uh, individual says, uh, hey, I found this thing. I was looking through statutes and we found this thing and what you're doing um, could be construed as uh, working with a PR uh, individual publicity representative. Um, so really, this is just trying to be proactive and, uh, and not in, in, in anticipation of any particular outreach that we're going to be doing. So has someone come forward and said that to you, that uh, you, uh, you're you being construed, or that there may be a possibility of you being construed as uh, working with a public outfit? Uh, Senator Lang, uh, Senator Anderson, no. Very good. Thank you, Senator Anderson. Any additional? Uh, Senator Newton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Johnson, first of all, I, I want to say I can't think of a better spokesman for MDVA than you. <laughs> but I know that you're terribly busy and you can't be every, every place to uh, uh, bring the uh, MDVA message forward. Um, th this bill also came forward last year. <laughs> And um, my understanding, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Johnson, is that there's no cost involved to MDVA or the state for, for this uh, bill. Chairman Lang, Senator Newton, that, that's correct. There is no additional uh, request for funding and there's no expectation that we would go beyond our current um, communications budget in order to accomplish uh, what we're looking to accomplish here. And Mr. Chair, if I can continue, I, I can't see any reason why there would be hesitation for us not to uh, include MDVA in the same uh, authority that the Department of Transportation, DEED, uh, and other agencies in the state government have. Uh, that we should give them the same opportunity to, to seek uh, spokespeople and, and writers for their uh, for their programs as long as they're not uh, expending additional funds. Thank you, Senator Newton. Uh, any other questions, comments? Um, I guess the, the one question I would ask uh, when it comes to the PAO, the Public Affairs Office um, that the Minnesota Guard has now, do you guys utilize the PAO office? Is this something that uh, is within your grasp of the MD, MVD, MDVA, or is it something that's a little outside that? Or would this prohibit any interaction between you and their office, or would it enhance some of that? Uh, Senator Lang, thank you for the question. Uh, I, I know that we communicate with the military affairs and the Guard um, and understand the, the initiatives that they're working on. I don't know what our communications office has with regards to the PAO over there. Um, shooting from the hip here, I, I don't see any issue with, uh, with adding our name to this list that would prevent us from working with the PAO for the Guard or um, military affairs. Yeah, it's just, you know, they have such a, 
well, large and uh, well-working office over there. I've worked with him on, on many occasions over, you know, many topics. Um, I'm just curious if some of that expertise would be of value. Anyways, um, with that, um, any additional questions, comments, members? Senator Swazinski, I'll give you the last word. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, the, the list has been mentioned a couple times and uh, Senator Newton did mention the Department of Veterans Affairs and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, mentioned the Department of Transportation indeed. The other agencies, according to statute that um, the veterans um, would like to be added to our, our Game and Fish Division, the State Agricultural Society and Explore Minnesota Tourism. So um, that's what we're asking in this bill to be added to that group. Thank you. Well, thank you, Senator. Um, members, uh, this bill is going to be will be laid out for possible inclusion in the omnibus bill. Um, and without any additional agenda items today, um, I will call this this committee stands adjourned. So thank you for your time today uh, and a, a quick 45 minute committee hearing. So great work. Uh, I will see you all next week. Oh. Thank you. Thank you.